to another garage time with Goody. And what we're gonna be doing today, we're gonna to be changing the alternator in a 2013 Dodge Journey 3.6 liter engine SXT all wheel drive version. And I have my arsenal of tools to help me. And they're growing, got a torque wrench now. And because of viewers like you, my tools are growing. And I'm gonna be able to do more videos like this. So thank you guys. Okay, the first thing you need to do is to remove this plastic cover off the top of the engine. And it just pops up just like that. And I'm gonna lay it to the side. And then you will have access to down in here to the whole engine. And you'll see right here is where I'm gonna to need to get to. That is where the alternator is. And you can see that there are these radiator hoses. A lot of people will do this in different ways and I'm not gonna drain the fluid. I'm just gonna take the hoses back and hold them back out of my way while I get access to the alternator. Okay, now the first step you're gonna to wanna to do on this job is disconnect the battery. Now in this particular vehicle, the battery is located underneath the fender here. And if you don't wanna take the fender off, there's another way that you can do this. Here at the top, this red, see where there's red over that bolt? That means positive. And this over here is the negative wire. So I'm going to use a 16 millimeter socket and I'm going to disconnect the battery up here. That way I do not have to take the bumper off. Save a lot of time. Nut off and lay it right here. I'll take this, this just comes up. Remember the way these goes on. The one closest, this one goes on first and the one on top goes on second. Now put those out of the way. Now I'm gonna take off the negative. And the reason why I am doing this is because when you're working on the alternator and you're gonna take off the, the wires, the wiring to the alternator, there's gonna be live current going to that and you don't wanna get shocked. It could possibly mess up your car and really make for a bad day. Okay, so that is out of the way. Okay, I've debated with this hose right here of which way I'm gonna take it off. And I'm gonna take it off up here because some fluid is gonna leak out and I want this to be upward because if, if I take this off up here and I hold this hose up, then there's nowhere for the fluid to go. So it's less likely that more is gonna leak out. So I'm gonna take needle nose pair of pliers and there is a clamp here. It's connected to the radiator. I'm just gonna wiggle that clamp back see that clamp coming back now you don't want to pull too hard and you don't want to be too rough with it because you this radiator is pretty much plastic you just want to be gentle and, and move it back and forth and 
you saw that little bit amount come out and this is completely rubber here so i'm gonna take this underneath of here i'm gonna push this up and back as far as it can go bit you're starting to be able to see the alternator a little better so i'm now going to take this hose off looks like it goes to the overflow and i'm going to move it back okay for this one i'm going to use channel locks because it can get to it a lot easier and i'm going to push that clamp back back and forth until it comes off and again be, be slow and persistent with it and a little more fluid will come out but make sure that these hoses are up out of the way you can even use a bungee cord if you want to to keep those up and out of the way or you can just leave them back like this, which is what I'm gonna do. As soon as you have these hoses, these two hoses here up out of the way, you will see down here, this is, this is the alternator. And you'll see right here, there is a bolt. Right here, there is a bolt. And those should be, these two bolts should be 13 millimeters and there's also one back behind there which we can't see yet the next step you're going to want to do is you're going to come to the passenger side of the vehicle and it's going to need to be jacked up so make sure you have a hydraulic jack and don't forget a jack stand the jack stand is going to be for safety because if the jack fails the jack stand will still hold the vehicle up and it will save your life. And your life is important. Okay, now don't forget a common sense thing is you're gonna want, on newer cars especially, you're gonna want to put the jack in a metal spot and not plastic or under, definitely don't let this go under a transmission pan or an oil pan and raise the jack because you will have a lot more problems than just your alternator. Okay, I found a good spot on the body for the jack. And I'm gonna start jacking this car up. And you'll jack it up until the wheel comes off the ground. And I know what you're thinking, shouldn't I loosen the lug nuts first? No. Not in my case, because I have an impact gun. If you don't have an impact gun, you will want to use your four-way lug wrench while the tire's still on the ground. But for me, I'm gonna go ahead and keep this up until the tire's off the ground by about two inches. Doesn't really have to be two inches. That's just my way that I do it. Then I'm gonna set the jack stand underneath the car. We'll set it up. Make sure you put the lug nuts where you're not gonna lose them. And then take, take the tire off and set it to the side. And then if you use this as a reference, you go back underneath here and right here is the tensioner to take off the serpentine belt that goes around the pulleys. You're going to need to loosen up the serpentine belt and take it off. So then that will give you access to take off the alternator. As you can see closer up, you will see the serpentine belt and this is the tensioner and if you don't have a tool that will plug into this and move the tensioner you can get one at your local auto parts store i'm going to move the tensioner so this belt will loosen up 
and then I can take it off and then I will be able to get better access to the alternator. To fight a war, you gotta become a war. That's from Rambo. Anyways, I had to go to the local auto parts store and they have a rent a tool program, which you may wanna do. This right here is the serpentine belt tensioner tool. And this thing isn't from Bandcamp. What this does, I would have to open it the wrong way, huh? What this thing has is this. This comes with many attachments here, but this is all I'm gonna need on this vehicle. If you need a little bigger attachment, it comes with this. If you need any sockets or wrenches, it comes with that also, so that you can reach into those confined, hard to get to spaces and you can get the job done. Okay, now that we're underneath the car, you can see that I have the tensioner tool and I'm going to put the tensioner tool on. Now, what a lot of people want to do, what you should do before you take the serpentine belt off is make sure you know how it's on and draw a diagram if you have to or take a picture with your phone because it's going to have to go back on and sometimes this is the hardest part of the whole procedure is putting the serpentine belt back on. Okay, so you want to uh, push it to the left. Remember, lefty loosey, righty toddy. And you see the serpentine belt is loosening up and I'm going to take it off of right here. See, it's coming off of this pulley right here. And then I'm going to let the tensioner back up and then this should give me enough slack to take it off of the pulley of the alternator. Okay, next, since we have the slack out of there, you can see the pulley to the alternator. Since there is slack. I'm just gonna take this serpentine belt right off of there. I'm taking it off the pulley just like that. And then I'm gonna have more access to the alternator now see there is two 13 millimeter bolts right here there's one there's one and then as you can see down in here where the flashlight is pointing that is the last 13 millimeter bolt that's holding in the alternator and we're going to be taking that one out there is this line right here that you want to be aware of this is an issue that i'm running into it's just barely in the way and you want to put your ratchet behind it and come from behind that and hook it to the the bolts and you'll have no problem and that's what i'm doing and it's clearing it no problem i'm going to try to get it here comes the first bolt i'm taking it out by hand and it, that's it right there in all of its glory. The next bolt I'm gonna be taking out is right there. And I'm not gonna be able to film it because the camera can't actually get down there while I have a ratchet down there. But the proximity where it's located from the top two is just a little bit to the lower left of the pulley to the alternator and it is also 13 millimeter. As you can see, the third bolt was coming out. Now it's loose enough for me to take it out by hand. Uh, another tip that you can do is if you have that last bolt loosened a little bit, the third one, you can actually hold the alternator by hand. And if you need to move the alternator up and down, uh, it, you know, to make the bolt come out easier. That's one tip you can use if it feels like it's stuck on you. So I now have the second bolt that's coming out and that's what that one looks like. And I'm gonna set it up here out of the way. And then now I'm gonna take this third one 
the rest of the way off. As you can see, the alternator is pretty wiggly by now. We're gonna see exactly how this baby comes out. I can feel that the third bolt is almost all the way out. Sliding it out now. That is the third bolt. I'm gonna put it up there. We're gonna see how this comes out. If there's enough room. So here's the pulley. And there's the metal. Very, it's very uh, tight. A very tight fit. But it looks like it's going to come up out of there. <clears throat> and there, it's up out of there, guys. It, it up out of there. You'll just want to make a mental note in your head of how you pulled it up out because you're going to have to put the new one back down in there. You'll see that there is a plastic cover and also another plug-in on this alternator. You're going to want to squeeze in right here. And pull that off. And you're going to take this bolt off and it has a wire that screws on to the back of the alternator. And you're gonna unscrew this nut and pull that wire off. Also, right here, if you can see at the bottom, there is a plastic connector. So I was having problems with this little clip here. And you can use your hand or a flathead screwdriver I'll show you with the flathead screwdriver. You'll want to not do this too hard, but just kind of slightly push down and out, and that'll get that red tab out. And then as you can see, once the red tab is back, you'll see that there is a black tab right in the middle now. You want to push down on the black tab and then pull it out. And then eventually, it comes unplugged just like that. But don't get frustrated and don't give up. You can use a wrench, but I'm gonna be using a deep well socket, a 13 millimeter, to remove this wire from the back of the alternator. It's on there pretty tight. And that's gonna get it to come right off of there. You can see that. I'm gonna do the rest of it by hand once it's broke loose. There's the nut. And importantly on this, there's also a washer. You do not wanna lose the nut or the washer. And then you take the wire off and then you pull you pull the alternator off, and as you can see, uh, the corrosion and how this is pretty worn out looking, and uh, you can hear the bushings. This is definitely a bad alternator. Once you get the old one out, you want to set it to the side. Do not lose it because most places want a core charge uh, when you buy an alternator. So when you take this back, you're going to get money back quite a bit. On this one, I'm going to be getting $30 back. Uh, it could be more or less in your situation. And they usually take these in and rebuild them. You're going to have to get a replacement part. And that's what I've done. And when you're getting the replacement part, you have many options. And here is the new one. And you can 
compare the old one and the new one. See how there's two bolts, holes in the front. Can you guys guess which one's the old one and which one's the new one? I know that's a dumb question. But as I was telling you, you want to keep the old one for the core charge that they'll give you money back. And on the new one, whenever you get a new one, you have many decisions. You can decide to get a used one at a junkyard, which you probably could get one anywhere between 50 and $100. You could get a remanufactured one, or you could get one from online, or you could get one from an auto parts store. If you get one from an auto parts store, like me, I have somebody in the family that works there. So I got $100 off a brand new one. I didn't want to go used when it comes to the alternator. Other parts, you know, I'll get from a junkyard or whatnot, but when it comes to an alternator, I went with brand new. This new one came with a new 13 millimeter bolt and a new washer here. So I'm gonna take that off and set it right there for a second. And you remember, this goes in just like that with the wire pointed in flat. If you can see that, not this way, but the way that the wire is pointed in and this just goes up against that and then the washer goes on and then that 13 millimeter nut and you'll just put it on by your fingers until you need to tighten it up okay before i tighten that down all the way remember this other plug right here i don't know if you guys can see it or not but i have the alternator turn where that plug goes in I'm going to plug it in until you can hear it click. I don't know if you could hear it there, it clicked. And then I'm going to push down on the tab and then that plug in is in place. I'm going to tighten down this 13 millimeter bolt here. This wire should be pointed straight up and down right here and i want to tighten this up i'll put all the torque specs in the dialog box in the in okay that one's tightened and then as you can remember it has a plastic covering that goes over this to protect it from water and other particulates snaps on you're going to want to clear this metal uh, hookup for the radiator and this should kind of slide right down in there like that and you're going to want to line these two holes up over here Okay, so if I run into a problem, you could too. As I was putting the new alternator back in, I could not get that bolt down here to line up. So what I did, and it was very easy around this problem, I just put this bolt in first and that solves the problem. It actually bolts, uh, the bolt goes to the alternator and then there is a bracket just above the AC compressor that it screws into. And then once you get that bolt in, you can get the two top bolts in and get them started pretty easily. Okay, before I reconnect the radiator hoses, I'm gonna put the serpentine belt over the pulley of the new alternator. And then we're gonna go underneath and put the serpentine belt back on. Now I have to put the radiator hoses back on. I'm going to put the little one back on first. And you just want to 
push it up on there until it reaches that circle, metal circle, that metal hump. And then you're gonna to wanna to take the clamp with the pair of channel locks and move it on up, move it back and forth until it's right over the clip where it was before. And then that one is back on. Now this one, you wanna be careful because right here, if you guys can see this right here, that is to the radiator. And you wanna be careful because it's just plastic. Move it back and forth until it goes all the way on. Just move it like this. When it's on there good, you can use a pair of needle nose pliers to clip this clip back on. I'm gonna take these needle nose pliers Make sure it's tight. Okay, now we're ready to hook the battery back up. I'm gonna hook the negative up first. Goes right here. It's gonna be 16 millimeter nut here. Okay, you wanna take the wires on the positive and put them back. You wanna take the one that's flat and closest to the front of the car and put it on first. Then you'll take the one that's kinda of like up and pointed forward and put it over top that one. And then you're gonna to wanna to put its nut back on there and tighten it down. It is a 16 millimeter also. Also keep in mind that after this, everything is gonna be reset in your car. Like your stereo and your clock. Also, when a uh, common sense thing, when you're tightening this, you don't wanna to touch this to metal because it could arc or you could get shocked. Okay, that's on there good okay before you put the car all back together completely you want to start the car and make sure the serpentine belt is going to be okay and it's on there correctly now if your alternator went bad your battery may be dead so you may need to get somebody to give your car a jump start or if you have a battery or a jump box uh, in order to start your car so i had a battery charger and I already started the car and it's on there great next you will want to start your car and as you can see there is no battery indicator light which is a good sign also you'll want to see if the serpentine belt is on correctly. You'll want to see if the serpentine belt is on correctly. And in this case it is. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put the wheel back on the car. And I always put the lug nuts on in a, a diagonal pattern 
because I want it to go on like here and then here and then I'll put them on all the way around. I don't want it to go on crooked. That's just me, something I do. Now I'm gonna go and put it in that pattern I was telling you about. And since I put them on with an impact gun, I won't have to tighten them even more once I lay this down. Now, you take the jack stand out, lay it back. Then I'm gonna let down the car from the jack. It's back on the ground. The next step should be putting on the plastic motor shroud, the cover that goes on here, and it just pops back on when you have it in place. And then you are ready to hit the road again. One last thing, where some coolant got out, you may wanna take a pressure washer and clean your driveway or a water hose because antifreeze can kill animals. Make sure you clean that up. And I hope you guys enjoyed the video today. Hopefully it helps somebody out there. Uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, hit the subscribe button, smash the like button, leave some comments in the comment section below. And until next time, next video, have a good day.